It's me, Graham, and today I'm serving up a delicious dish that's gonna make you jealous. Safety first. Double chocolate chocolate chip cookies. Mmm. Mm. Taste test time. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not gonna eat these now, they're way too hot. I'm gonna have to wait to enjoy this chewy, gooey deliciousness. Which means I'll need patience. Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. It'll be a challenge to wait, but I will do it. Do you smell that? Well, no. You wouldn't. <laughs> so, let me try and describe the smell for you. Imagine you're walking along a beach made entirely of chocolate. The chocolate ocean is waving nearby. And as you breathe in, the air is a warm chocolate breeze. That's what it feels like to be in the presence. These cookies! Maybe just one bite. No! No cookies! Oh, I've gotta think about something else. Light, vegetable oil, mannequin, crock pot. Cookies. No! Ah! <laughs> Time to put these away. There. Now it will be easy to wait. I can still smell them. In today's story, we'll hear about a group of people who are finding it very hard to wait. And they knew better. I'll be here when you get back.
everybody, it is story time again. I cannot wait to tell you this week's story and show you these cool little boxes I have. I have a whole bunch of these little boxes here. You, you can't see them all. There, there's a, there's, a, there's a, bunch, a bunch of them. Yeah, and, and there's something different inside of each one of these boxes and you'll never guess what it is. So just pay attention and you'll see what's inside the little boxes. So. Without further ado, let's get started on our story. So for hundreds of years, God's people, the Israelites, had lived as slaves in Egypt. And they cried out to God, and he rescued them. God parted the waters of the Red Sea. Oh, All right, done with that one. What happened next? He led them through to freedom in the wilderness. There, God showed his love and care by providing bread from heaven and water from a rock. And then, after three months, God led his people to Mount Sinai, where they set up camp in the desert at the foot of a mountain. God called out to their leader, Moses, from the mountain. Listen to what the Bible tells us, he said. Here is what I want to say to my people who belong to Jacob's family. Tell the Israelites, you have seen for yourselves what I did to Egypt. You saw how I carried you on the wings of eagles and brought you to myself. Now obey me completely. Keep my covenant. If you do, then out of all the nations, you will be my special treasure. Moses shared God's word with the people, and they agreed to do everything God had said. This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt, and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. And later, God called Moses to come meet with him on the mountaintop. Before he left, Moses spoke to the elders and he told them if anyone had a problem, they could go and talk to Aaron and her about it while he was gone. And then Moses and his helper Joshua went up the mountain and the glory of God settled on the mountain like clouds of fire. Moses stayed within the cloud on the mountain talking to God for 40 days and 40 nights. That's a long time, isn't it? And meanwhile, the Israelites got impatient. Mm -hmm. The people went to Aaron and complained. Moses has apparently just left them for good. And the Bible tells us that they told Aaron, come, make us a God that will lead us. This fellow Moses brought us up out of Egypt, but we don't know what's happened to him. So, Aaron told them to give him their gold jewelry. Hmm. And then he melted the jewelry down and formed it into a statue in the shape of a golden calf. Basically, the people wanted to make a statue of a god that they could see and worship instead of the real god. And they said, Israel, here is the God that has brought you up out of Egypt. And all the people went, <laughs> okay. So the next day, people brought sacrifices to honor the golden calf. And they ate and they drank and they danced wildly in front of the cow. And up on the mountain, in the middle of the cloud, oh yeah, Moses was still up there, God spoke to Moses, and here is what he said. Go down. Your people you brought up out of Egypt have become very sinful. They have quickly turned away from what I commanded them. Moses was broken to hear what was going on. So he and Joshua began their trip back down the mountain. Moses carried 
two heavy stone tablets that were covered with the laws that God had given him. And as they came down the mountain, Joshua could hear there was, there was shouting in the distance, and he thought that, oh, maybe they were at war, like maybe the people were being attacked. But as they approached the camp, what they actually saw was people were dancing. He heard their cheers and chants as they were worshiping the golden cow. So, Moses couldn't believe it. He was so angry, he took those two stone tablets and he threw them down and he broke them. Moses marched right through the crowd. He grabbed that golden calf the people had asked Aaron to make and he burned it in the fire. Oh, and not just that. He gathered up the ashes after he'd burned it, spread it out in the water, and told the Israelites to drink it. Ew. Yes, <laughs> they had not listened to what they were supposed to do. Through the years, God has helped his people over and over, but when they had the weight, they would forget all about how good he was. They chose their own way. And they had to face the consequences of disobeying God. God was faithful and trustworthy to the Israelites through it all. And he is faithful and trustworthy to us too. So when you have to wait, remember what is true. And the Israelites did not remember what is true. They did not remember the one true God who had brought them out of slavery in Egypt and taken care of them. They were too busy making a cow out of jewelry and, and worshiping God. And, and, and they, they forgot what was true. You know, if we choose to be patient and remember how God has been good to us, we can remember how much he loves us. His plans are always always good. We can trust him no matter what. All these things are true. They will always be true in our lives. God is going to be there. No matter how long you have to wait, don't forget what's true. Don't forget what's important. God is there. God loves you. God is good. So let's end our story today by bowing our heads and praying together to thank God for being good to us and that we can count on him no matter what. What? Especially in those times when maybe things take a little longer than we think they should. He is still there for us. So let's bow our heads. Dear God, thank you so much for giving us these stories and showing us that we can't give up on you just because we have to wait a little bit. We know that you're going to be there. No matter how long we have to wait and be patient, you're there. You've got a plan for us and you have got this. You are going to take care of us and you are not going to leave us. You're never going to give up on us. Help us remember to trust in you, to remember what is true, even when we have to wait, even when we're feeling impatient. Remind us you're there. you got this. Thank you so much for letting us be able to tell this story today. And please bless all the children who are watching. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us for our story today. I hope that I see you next week. See you then. Bye. And God called out to their leader, Moses, from the mountain. I would like for something in that box. Oh, I need to put better labels on these. Which was, oh, I don't remember which one was which. This one? Um, this one? Oh. This? Oh. This is going to take me a while to find the right one.